going to have Jerry open the uh, post game show with you. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, you needed uh, to, to make some adjustments after that second quarter. You sit at halftime with Joey, you need to get into a rhythm in the second half. Your team certainly did that. Yeah, we came out, uh, came out, we started fast and we took the momentum and then we allowed for them to take the momentum right back. So we did, we tried some things in the second quarter. We tried to create some explosive plays from a coverage standpoint, they took it away. Plus they got a little pressure on us. So uh, we made some adjustment, uh, some adjustments at halftime uh, to handle some of their pressures, um, create some angles and some leverage on some plays that we felt we can, you know, uh, exploit and came out, but played really hard and played really hard the entire game. So really proud of our guys for doing that. One of the hallmarks of your team, particularly offensively, is the ability to run the ball. And your offensive line, which has been kind of pieced together at times uh, so far this season, is, is just remarkable. And you've got the running backs that are able to take advantage of that. I thought, obviously, Travis Dye, uh, obviously, Anthony Brown. But I, I just want to mention Byron Cardwell, a youngster uh, who is giving you and Travis Dye a chance to get a breather once in a while. Yeah, him and you know, and Seven McGee, you know, he he only got a couple of carries, but he's ready to explode too, and and so is uh, Trey Benson. But uh, talking about Travis, Travis continues just to be a tremendous leader, difference maker in this program, one of the best players in college football, in our opinion. Anthony again continues to find ways just to continue to move our offense, make plays with his arm, with his feet, uh, and then Byron. Byron has stepped up and has played a, a significant role and has made some really big runs, some explosive runs, made people miss on uh, contact plus two. So he's a big guy. Um, he, he plays with older eyes. He sees things and he's a really quick, uh, it's a quick study, learns quickly. So all in all, just really proud of all those guys. A uh, big key in this ball game tonight, I thought was your field position after Washington State would score, Mikhail Wright would come back with a great return and give your offense a great field position. Huge play, huge play. Mikel had been uh, been dying to bust out all year long and blocked it up really well. Good design by by Coach Williams, but uh, those guys blocked it really well. Mikel hit it. He also broke a couple tackles, almost came out of it clean and went all the way and scored. But a huge boost, tremendous amount of energy that brought to our team and um, we ended up scoring on that. And that just, that kick-started us for the second half. And then defense against the run to this year has really gotten stronger and stronger. I mean, you, you give up our average around 123 a, a game, uh, 91 only to that for Washington State, forced them to have to throw the ball particularly. Late. But your ability to, to keep the explosion plays down. They got one early in the ball game, but you're still, your defense is keeping people in front of them. They are. A couple of times they, they broke contain on us and then a good chunk of those yards are on that last drive where we're playing some of the guys that we need to get better you know we played a lot of reserves so um certainly you know that that first unit and the guys that are alternating with the first unit have really stepped up block destructions paying off we're striking blockers we're getting off blocks better we're making plays and you know that's um they run the ball well they really do they have really good running backs they got two great offensive tackles uh they really spread you out those big splits and our guys just did a really good job controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides and at the end of the day it was a difference in the game I know we talk about Kayvon Thibodeau a lot, but you, you got bookends. I mean, Brand, talk about Brandon Dorless a little bit because I, I mean, you, they just complement each other. Uh, those two guys really make it difficult uh, on, on offense. They do. They do. Brandon Dorless is I – mean, he's as explosive and as effective as a defensive lineman as, you know, you'll find now. I mean, he's, uh, he's big, he's powerful, extremely smart. Um, athletic as can be. So he has first, second, third down battle. He doesn't come, he doesn't have to come out of the game. Um, and when he is, um, when he's playing at, at the high level, like he has been playing lately, it changes us. You know, they can't just focus on cave on all the time. Good to see a guy like Jason Jones also get his first sack of the year, playing a lot better, developing more and more and more. Um, but a lot of guys, you know, Braden Swinson played well. I know Mace played, played well. So a lot of guys really stepping up and playing good football. And from McKinley doing what he does, managing your defense from that back end. Got another pick tonight. And how about Brian Addison, a receiver, a defender, a receiver? He looked like a receiver tonight with that interception. Yeah, I'll tell you, when it was 7 nothing, and uh, Verone gets that pick, that was another huge bolt of just energy through our sideline. Our offensive guys fed off of that big time. And that's what Verone does. Verone's a game changer for us as well. Got that interception. Uh, Try to hit us on a deep corner ball. 
He played it just perfectly, took it away, almost came out of that too. You know, they grabbed him by the jersey, by the face mask. So that actually tacked on some more yardage. But uh, then B.A. getting his first interception, man. B.A. has been through a lot, done a lot. And it's great to see him now, his role expanding, getting out there and making, you know, such an important play to seal a game like this one. He, uh, really proud of him. I kind of guess what you might say when I say, hey, think about it. You're nine and one with two regular season games left. Mean anything, or is it still that mentality? One and oh, back to work. No, we're one and oh, you know, clock will strike midnight here in a, about 30 minutes or so. And, um, and we got to get back at it, you know, make sure the guys get a good night's sleep, get some good food in them, some good rest. And, um, you know, we're, we're getting better. We're getting better and better as a program. Uh, there's, you know, our, our run game continues to improve. The way we defend the run continues to improve. We defend the pass well for the most part tonight. I'll beat that last drive. Uh, a lot of parts are coming together. Our special teams, our coverage units were way better tonight. Drastic improvement. We worked on them. It showed up. Got to mention Chris Hudson because Chris, Hud Chris Hudson's tackle on the fumble, well, what they call the fumble, I don't have a good TV angle. Maybe you guys saw it better than I did. But that, as that thing was getting returned, Chris Hudson um, getting, getting that defender on the ground end up making them settle for three, where that could have really turned, you know, turned the game around the other way. It could have been a huge momentum swing. So credit to him for doing that. Things like that, things that stick out, Mikel's kickoff return, Verone's interception, the defensive stand after Chris Hudson's tackle, all those things are they, they just they're the catalyst, man. Those things are really big time plays against an excellent. I want to give them a lot of credit. That's a really good football team. That's a team that's really hard to prepare for. They're very unique in what they do on both sides of the ball. And final question for me or comment against the 12th man. The Otson crowd tonight was spectacular. Awesome. Awesome. Needed that. Needed to have it. I mean, everyone uh, everyone had a great time. It's, it sounded like everyone had a great time. I know our prospects and recruits, families had an awesome time. But it was running out there to start the game and seeing that and feeling that noise level. We knew it was going to be special. We felt it. And uh, it makes our players Say it all the time. It makes our players a couple inches taller and a few pounds heavier and stronger every time the Austin crowd comes like that. So really appreciate everyone there tonight. Got to keep bringing it. Uh, Coach, I appreciate your time. I know there are a lot of other questions for you, so we'll let you go to them. Thanks for your time here in a postgame show. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Go Ducks. All right. We'll open up. All right, we'll take questions. a break and come back. Uh, uh, happy oh, man. Yeah, you know? Jerry here. All right. We'll open it up to questions. Uh, we'll start with James Kripia. Or going in. Uh, you run for over 300 yards again. Uh, so there's certainly a lot of good to take there, but the two fumbles do turn what were two score games back down to one when you try set opportunities to make it a three score game early. Your thoughts on the fumbles? And, and I know that they're, they lead the country in forcing fumbles. Do you think that was part of it that they just forced some things or your, your thoughts on those plays and how they swung the momentum back and forth? Well, no, we knew that they, I mean, I, when they played Arizona state, they were up 34, nothing. I believe they forced four turnovers inside of Arizona state's 25 yard line. We knew it. we prepped it all week. Our our scout team guys were just knocking at the ball again and again and again, every opportunity. It was uh, one of the biggest focal points of the week. So the fact that those things came out were disappointing. Uh, the fact that we stick with our guys and just keep coming back with them and they came back and made plays uh, is is awesome. It is. It shows resiliency. So an, a tremendous opportunity to improve in an area. That certainly, um, as you continue to go on in the season, your, 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 your wiggle room for errors becomes smaller and smaller. So definitely got to get back to work on that. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, did you anticipate uh, Anthony Brown rushing this many times? And do you feel like maybe just the success he had early on in this game kind of pulled some attention away that opened up things in the second half for Cardwell and Dyer to run the football as well? No doubt. I mean, what they, what they were doing, it called for him to use his legs tonight, and he did it, you know, and, and you look at him in 17 for 22, uh, throwing the ball, and then rushing 17 for 128. I mean, it's what they do defensively. If you, you know, you've, we take a lot of pride as coaches in making adjustments and looking for areas to attack, plans of attack. And uh, we felt that these things would work. And they work. They work only if they're executed at a high level by the players. So all the credit goes to the players. They executed at a really high level. And, and Anthony used every bit of everything he has to make it a reality. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Coach, I wanted to ask you about that sequence there where it looks like Anthony scores. I think they even had the music like he did. And then they come squirting out like that. Just the, 
resilience your team showed, because that could have really been a, a spot where the game gets flipped to, to not only to keep them out of the end zone, but to, to keep them three points there and, and just kind of, I guess, give the ball back to the offense to keep building. No doubt. You know, obviously you don't want it to happen because you go by 17 and, and really get closer to closing out the game. But it also it's an opportunity to test the resiliency of your team. It really is. And to pass eight tests like that, I mean, you'd like to hold them to zero, but to hold them to three points, you still have a seven-point game and then take the ball and go right down and score. I mean, that's that's strong. That's strong because uh, this team that we played has had a lot of success holding people in the 20s, you know, 21, 24, 17 range. Um, and we coughed up a couple where we could have, you know, really put up some points. So to be able to bounce back like that and complete drives, um, the resiliency and the effort to take down a guy on a fumble – because that guy's one block away from making it a three-point game, return that thing all over. But look at the effort. When you get a chance, look at the effort of our players trying to get that guy on the ground. I mean, that's that's a really good team football. So we're growing. We're getting better. Want to know is sinking in. Um, and I think we're just scratching the surface. I think the team's getting better and better every single week at a lot of different areas, a lot of different phases. So, you know, the sky's the limit. Tyson, I'll drive five quarter. Mario, every single year of your playing career in college, you guys were in similar positions to this kind of mid to late November with either one, two or no losses. And I'm just curious, like, what did you pick up when you were a player from coaches like Jimmy Johnson or Dennis Erickson about the way that they kind of conduct and handled themselves this late into the season when, you know, kind of everything's at play? Sure. Well, I mean, Coach Johnson was was something else. Now he was awesome. Great teacher and a mentor. Um, you know, I think it's different because we're in a conference, you know, and I, I, it's almost like our talent disparity on the teams I, I was fortunate to play on. I mean, they're really, really talented. Those are all Hall of Famers. I'm not, but they were. My teammates were. And, man, I just – it was different. The, the games weren't – you weren't paired up with conference games where you had these challenges week in and week out. Um, but it was really focused – focusing the team on that one game. I don't, I think every coach that I played for or worked for has always emphasized the same stuff. And a lot of it we get from that, you know, just being one to know. So um, that's what I handle is just to be real, man. There's, there's no other, there's no head faking, you know, there's no, uh, there's no nonsense. It's being very real and truthful and honest with your team, um, working hard with them and putting in more time than they, so that they know that you're putting in that time so that they value you as much as you value them and love them up when they need to be loved up and bring it as hard as you can when you know that they need to be forged to be a little bit tougher and a little bit stronger, a little bit more callous. And as, a, as an organization, we have that relationship. And I think that's what Coach Johnson had with us as players. He could push us. He could push us to the limit, and all we do is come back and ask for more because we knew it was the right way and we knew it was a way to want to know. Zach Neal, Duxwire. Coach, you said this past week that kick coverage was going to be a major emphasis for you guys and you showed some real improvement holding them to just 21 yards per attempt. Um, I'm wondering if you could speak to how important that is for keeping momentum on your side and, and routinely putting the defense in position to succeed. Undoubtedly. And it starts with uh, ball placement, right? Great job by Cam tonight, both on his field goal extra points, but also on his kickoffs. You know, you saw him get get whacked that one time after the field goal, and he just got up and he looked like he was upset, wanted to kick it even deeper. So credit to him. But the ball placement, the way that we took the line, the speed, our first level avoids. Um, so technique and fundamentals. And then the physicality at the, at the, in that combat zone, in that 15 to 20 yard area, where those guys are fitting you up with their second level blockers. Our guys were much better getting hands on blockers two gapping, shedding, um, accelerating through the ball carrier, wrapping up, getting him on the ground. We were much more, we, we were we were much better tacklers tonight in a lot of different areas, minus the second quarter. Uh, but on special teams, certainly we're a much better uh, tackling unit tonight. Antoine Staley, register guard. Uh, obviously, you got off to a really good start, four, uh, 14 nothing, and then uh, the Travis Dodd fumble seemed like it really changed things and gave them momentum. So just talk about just handling that adversity and just kind of what you said to the team in the locker room that really propelled them in the third quarter. 
Well, it was no different than when we started. I mean, we all felt that we were going to have to earn this thing one play at a time. It was going to have to be that type of, you know, fourth quarter urgency and a one and no mentality for every single play. That was not going to change. It couldn't change. And, you know, when you're playing really good teams at this time of year that have the same at stake as you have, you're going to get their very best. So all focus, all energy poured into making sure that every single rep that we took tonight, that it was going to be a one and oh rep. It was going to be a fourth quarter type rep. And staying focused on that proved to be the difference. So we got time for one more question. Uh, we have players waiting. Uh, Jared Denny, scoop duck on three. Hey, Mario, I was just wondering if Johnny Johnson is okay, if there's any sort of uh, update on that injury. No update yet. We'll evaluate him tonight, tomorrow morning, and uh, get that to you as soon as we can. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Congrats on the win. All right, thanks, guys. Be safe out there, guys. Go Ducks.